Hey friends, this is Visionary 3D, and today I'm releasing my new web GPU framework, Minimal. Minimal is a shader-driven JavaScript framework that lets you write parallel GPU algorithms very easily. I've been working on this project for a couple of months now, and now I'm open sourcing it for everybody to use. Check out Minimal's GitHub page for more info on our roadmap. At the core of Minimal is an idea called shader-driven programming. This means that this framework operates based on a core building block called shaders. Shaders are programs that run in parallel on the GPU. Let's look at some code. To make GPU programs work, we have to manage a lot of pieces on the CPU. And this can be a huge time waste for people like me who just want to focus on writing shaders. This includes GPU resource creation like textures and buffers, dispatching compute shaders, offsetting values in uniforms, and many other pain points that exist for writing even the simplest GPU programs. I wanted to create a framework that sits on top of WebGPU instead of a huge layer of abstraction that ignores its existence. I wanted to create a very minimal layer of abstraction. In minimal, all the resource types are normal WebGPU types. To create a shader in minimal, you can instantiate a shader class, which takes in a GPU device, a name, and some shader code. The shading language the minimal framework uses is a superset of Wixel. Wixel is the web GPU's shading language. However, we introduced some extensions for Wixel, which let you do a lot more directly from shader code. This new superset is called MSL, which stands for the minimal shading language. Let's start by writing a simple fragment shader that makes the entire screen color red. Here we're simply returning a vec4 in our main entry function. However, for this shader to render to a texture, we need to actually write a lot of JavaScript boilerplate code. Minimal solves this problem by introducing special decorators. A decorator is a word that starts with the at symbol. Based on this definition, Wixel already has some default decorators, which you can see in this code. Keep in mind that the official Wixel documentation refers to the words that start with the at symbol as attributes. However, when we are talking about minimal, decorator is a more technically correct term for me to use. So from this point on, I'll be just using the term decorator. In minimal, we've extended the fragment decorator to take in a texture name as a parameter. We can give it a texture called output texture, and then we can introduce a texture to our shader that is called output texture. We do this in Wixel like this, but to create this GPU texture, we need to actually write a lot of JavaScript boilerplate code. Minimal solves this problem with, yet again, a special decorator. The texture decorator takes in two parameters called size and format. We don't have to know this though, because if we don't provide the required inputs of a special decorator, we get a nice error that tells us what we're missing and exactly where. Parameters are also decorators that start with the add symbol. Here, we make a 1920 by 1080 texture with the RGBA16 float format. And now our fragment shader renders the result directly to the output texture. Our shader is ready, so next we'll instantiate a composer and add this shader to it by calling add shader. We run the composer by calling composer.update, which runs all of the shaders we add to it in sequence. This code works, but we still get a black screen as the result. What's the issue? Well, I'll have to tell you that our shader is correctly rendering to a GPU texture we created. However, there is no canvas to display the result. If you want to render directly to a canvas, instead of the name of a GPU texture, you can pass in the canvas decorator. The canvas decorator will create an HTML canvas element internally, and all we have to do next is add it to the document. And now we don't need the texture anymore, so we can remove the texture declaration. This is great, but this introduces a limitation, which is that the size needs to be constantly defined in the shader, and there's no way to change it. 
Minimal provides a nice solution to this by introducing wildcards. Wildcards are special decorator input values that can change dynamically. So their main use case is when you need dynamic values as the inputs to special MSL decorators. Wildcards are entirely user defined and will be replaced before the shader code is even compiled. So let's introduce a JavaScript controlled wildcard called resolution. The resolution of the canvas will change dynamically. So we don't want to hard code that value. We instantiate a wildcard like this by providing a name and an array of data. You can change this wildcard dynamically whenever you want to by calling set, which I'm going to do when the window resize occurs. Next, all you have to do is pass in this wildcard to make it accessible to the shader. And in shader code, I can replace the hard coded values by writing wc.resolution. You can access all the wildcards simply using the WC dot pattern, which stands for wildcard, not anything else. Wildcard supports swizzling. And since resolution is a vector two conceptually, you can create a texture with wc.resolution.xx or wc.resolution.yx. Okay, now we have a full screen fragment shader, which renders the color red to our canvas element. And this is all happening while writing a few lines of shader code. If you like WebGPU, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I think WebGPU is a very powerful API with a bright future. So I'm not going to stop producing videos about it anytime soon. Now, let me show you what I think is the most powerful feature of minimal referencing. Minimal makes it really easy to create standalone shaders that just work. However, the true power of minimal comes from creating multiple layers of shaders and defining the relation between them. Here, I will have to introduce you to a new type of shader, which only exists in minimal. This new type of shader is called a resource shader. If your shader doesn't have a main function and is purely used for creating GPU resources, it'll automatically become a resource shader. Here, I'm going to create the code for a resource shader that defines an output buffer resource. We're going to create an output buffer with the size as the number of all pixels. Since I want to store a color for each pixel, I'll multiply the size by three for the RGB values. Nothing else needs to exist in this shader. I can just instantiate a new shader object and pass in the new shader code along with the resolution wildcard. Now I'm going to create yet another shader, which is going to be a compute shader. In this shader, we're going to take a reference of the output buffer in the resource shader. This is not going to copy or recreate this buffer. It's going to use the exact same GPU resource. Because we want to modify this buffer, we're going to use the read write access keyword. By the way, all of this is just Wixel. The only part that's different is that we don't specify the group and binding indices, and we just prefix the definition with a special decorator. In this case, the ref decorator. We can rename it to input buffer. And what I'm going to do now is set the color of each point using an index. The multiply by three is because we're storing three different channels, which are R, G, B. We've extended the compute decorator of Wixel to take in the number of threads you want to spawn in a compute shader. This might be a good time to mention that the only Wixel default decorators that we extended are the compute and fragment decorators because they exist in every fragment shader and compute shader. Now, this compute shader writes to the buffer created in the resource shader. And so we can display this buffer finally by using another reference in our fragment shader. We calculate a flat index and we read the color directly from the output buffer of the resource shader. And now we get the green color on our screen. An amazing thing that's happening here is that when we resize the window, the GPU resources that depend on the resolution wildcard will be recreated and managed safely, 
which means you don't have to worry about resizing textures or buffers. The last thing I want to show you is how to add and control uniforms. We want to have a color selector and we want to be able to change the color that's being stored in this buffer dynamically. A uniform is a variable that has the same value across all instances of the shader. You can think of it as a small value that we send to the shader from JavaScript land. To define a uniform in MSL, you can use the uniform decorator, which will create a uniform buffer. However, this time, you don't have to provide the size manually because we calculate it dynamically in the background. The only important factor for a uniform decorator is that we need a struct that defines the layout of the uniform. And we get some initializer decorators which give default values to the items in the uniform. The name of the initializers are the same as what's defined in the structure. Now, instead of green, we'll use the value of this color uniform. And as you can see, we get the same result. To change this uniform though from JavaScript, you can call the getUniform method on the shader object, which gives you the ability to update the uniform by calling set and providing a new array. An important note you should keep in mind is that all the math objects in minimal, like color, vector3, matrix4, and other math structures are all arrays under the hood. With this now, I can have a graphical user interface that gives me the ability to change the color in real time. One final thing I want to show you is the default uniforms that Minimal provides. We have a list of default uniform values which you can get access to by using the window structure like this. Let's review everything that we've covered so far. We have a resource shader that purely defines a buffer resource. We have a compute shader that purely writes to that buffer using a user controlled uniform. And finally, we have a fragment shader that renders the contents of the buffer to a full screen HTML canvas element. To clarify, you can create the buffer inside the compute shader as well, and then reference it in the fragment shader using the shader name dot resource name pattern. This was minimal, a shader driven framework for creating parallel GPU algorithms, a very minimal layer of abstraction on top of web GPU. Before you go ahead and use Minimal in your projects, keep in mind that Minimal is still under heavy development. This means that Minimal may change and break many times in the future. So if Minimal is still not ready for production, why am I making this video? Well, the first reason I'm making this video is because I need your feedback. I wanted to get the ideas behind Minimal out there as quickly as possible to get your feedback. So if you think some ideas of Minimal are good, bad, share your opinion in the comment section of this video. I will read every comment and in this way we can make Minimal great with your feedback. The second reason I made this video is because I'm interested in finding people who want to contribute to Minimal. Minimal is an open source project and I believe the best way to develop it and improve it is to do it in the open. So if you have some ideas to improve it, consider contributing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope the ideas in this video are interesting and exciting. And if they are, please make sure to like this video. And if you have any feedback for me, make sure to leave it in the comment section of this video. Thanks again for watching the entire video. I will see you in the next videos.